Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. It's official. We have a major hurricane on the way to Florida as we have two big time storms out here in the Atlantic Ocean that we have to cover. First things first, we've got Hurricane Franklin out here, now a category three hurricane with winds around 115 miles per hour. And we got gusts all the way up to 140 miles per hour. This is moving to the north northwest and expected to become a category four later tonight with 130. 30 mile per hour winds. Now this is still going to go well to the west of Bermuda, but this is going to ride the coast in such a way where it is going to send some big time swells and maybe some rip current activity to places like the Carolinas along the coast. So be careful in the water over there, but you're going to have your own problems with Idalia sooner than later. But Franklin is going to go way out to sea and eventually just become a fish storm that we don't have to worry about. The one that unfortunately we do have to worry about is Idalia or Edalia. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Anyways, right now, this storm has 65 mile per hour winds and gusts up to 75 miles per hour. This is much stronger than what we thought it would be at this point, and that is not a good thing. It underwent some intensification last night, and we think that's going to continue today, as we do expect this to be a Category 1 hurricane as soon as 2 p.m. today. And then it's going to graze Cuba, and as it interacts with the mountains of Cuba, it might weaken a little bit, or at least the rapid intensification will be slowed down a little bit and then it's going to go up into the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and likely gain strength all the way until it makes landfall somewhere in between Tampa and Apalachicola. Okay, this is actually a little bit farther east than what we originally thought. So Tampa, you're in the path now for potentially a direct landfall from this, but the center of the cone is somewhere around Cedar Key, okay? And just before landfall, around 2 a.m. on August 30th, we do expect this to be a Category 3 major hurricane with a 115 mile per hour winds and 140 mile per hour gusts. But unfortunately, I expect that number to be even higher as we go forward because of what we're seeing down here where the storm is now. You see those big blobs popping up? Those are hot towers. That's deep convection that's rising up around the center of the storm. And that last big bubble that you see pop up here is actually popping up literally around the center of circulation. And if it wraps completely around it, we're going to see an eye form. We're going to see an eye wall form and it's over from there that's when it starts rapidly intensifying as it approaches Florida once again we did not expect for this to be happening at this far south okay the fact that it's already happening down here means that it's gonna be much stronger than what we thought it could be yesterday or the day before that but at the very least we're gonna have a category one here in a couple of hours a category two as soon as August 29th at 2 p.m. and then you know the rest of the story here we've got hurricane watches and warnings going out for the western portions of Florida we are actually already Already seeing some evacuations as well and I expect those numbers to go up as the day goes on so the time to start preparing for this was a couple of days ago now it's time to put those plans in action okay so here's a look at the official cone from the National Hurricane Center once again this is tropical storm Idalia soon to be hurricane Idalia the M here represents where we think this will be a major hurricane we expect this to be a hurricane all the way up until it gets into Georgia as well so there's gonna be some pretty significant inland impact drop storm just off the coast of Myrtle Beach and then eventually this is going to go out to sea and maybe even affect Bermuda a little bit as we get later into the weekend. One of the most concerning things about this storm is going to be the storm surge, okay? This area of the Big Bend of Florida is notorious for producing life-threatening storm surge whenever storms come in this way and it's honestly not very often that we get such a strong storm coming into this exact corridor so there's going to be some damage in this area unfortunately in Anybody who lives in this area should probably be thinking about potentially uh, trying to get farther inland. Of course, this is uh, some place where a lot of our storm chasers are even not willing to go. There's no parking garages. There's no higher elevation to get away from the water as it comes up. This whole place could be completely inundated by water all the way into as far inland as like Perry, Florida. Tampa Bay could even see some life-threatening storm surge around four to seven feet. And we're expected to see it all the way down to Inglewood and maybe even down there towards Naples around two to four feet. Now, this is assuming that the storm takes a path like this. If the storm does go a little bit farther to the south and to the east and maybe takes a track like this, the storm surge in the Tampa Bay area will be much worse. Or even if the storm kind of parallels the coast more like this, the, the storm surge in the uh, Tampa Bay area is going to be much worse. I'm actually really concerned about Tampa here. Right now, I'm completely on board with this forecast and this is something that we can deal with. However, if that center of circulation gets too much closer to the Bay area, 
think we're going to deal with some pretty significant storm surge over here, but it's not set in stone just yet. Another thing we're going to have to deal with here is flash flooding. Everybody in the red is in a moderate risk of flash flooding and excessive rainfall over the next five days. That's going to be from around Tallahassee over to Jacksonville, Florida, up to Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, and Wilmington, North Carolina. These areas are going to get a tremendous amount of rain. Some of them are going to get over 10 inches of rain by the time this is all said and done, and this is going to cause life-threatening flooding. So how strong is Idalia going to get? Right now, a lot of our models are suggesting that this is going to get up to around a cat 2. So this mess of an image here that you see is all the different models, and it kind of plots the intensity over time. You can see that some of them get Idalia up to a category 3, but a lot of them are right here in this area during peak intensity. You got to remember, these models were showing a lot less than this just yesterday, and the next suite, the next run of models that come out, will probably show something even stronger. This is eerily similar to what Hurricane Michael's trajectory looked like at this exact same time period in 2018. So the ceiling on this storm is still a Cat 5. I really do believe that. Now, I don't know if we're going to get there, but I really don't buy that the top of the line hurricane we're going to get out of this developing system is only a Cat 3. Okay, let's take a look at some forecast models. Here's the HWRF. We're looking at 10 meter wind speed, and you can see that by 2 p.m. today, we do expect hurricane force winds around the right side of the eye wall there, but watch how it interacts with Cuba, and it does weaken out a little bit, okay? The closer this storm gets to Cuba, the more weakening we're going to see before it gets back out here into the Gulf and starts rapidly developing again. Here we are at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, and we have a full-on, more than likely, Cat 2, maybe even going on Cat 3 storm here to the south and west of Florida. By 11 p.m. on Tuesday, we are, once again, definitely Cat 3 status, and we're starting to see that big-time storm surge come into places like Tampa and Port Charlotte, but the strongest part of the storm will be headed right towards the Big Bend of Florida, and this is actually going nuts with the wind field here. This is, has a huge area of winds that could be over 100 miles per hour, and if that's the case, that we'll see even more damage from this storm, but this has landfall somewhere around St. Mark with damaging winds from Panama City all the way over to Perry, Florida, and then those hurricane force winds last all the way up into southern Georgia, and then tropical storm force winds all the way up into central Georgia. So you can see here that this is one of the stronger scenarios, okay? This almost gets it up to Cat 4 status, and this is a pretty reliable model, okay? And this has the hurricane reconnaissance data from the airplanes that we talked about yesterday, so I trust this model. It's not 100% correct, obviously. I think the track's a little bit off, but this definitely could be a representation of the strength that we get out of the storm. Here's another view of it from the HAFS model. This shows us what the radar looked like. Watch how the circulation becomes more evident as we go later into time. Here's Tuesday into Wednesday at 2 a.m. We've got a well-formed eye here and likely 115 to 130 mile per hour winds going on around the eye wall. Something I want you to notice though is these bands on the front right quadrant of the storm are going to have embedded supercells in them and there will be likely some tornadoes in the peninsula of Florida all the way over to Orlando, maybe even on the eastern side of Florida during the day on Wednesday and that's something that we have to watch very closely. And then this shows landfall somewhere around 8 a.m. on Wednesday, right in the middle of the big band. This would be a worst case scenario for storm surge in this area. And then as this comes onto land, once again, we still expect maybe hurricane force winds at this point by 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And we've got some very heavy rain going on up here in South Carolina. And we might even see some more tornadic activity right along the coast as the center of circulation stays a little bit farther inland. But the main threat here, I'm telling you guys, is going to be the very heavy rain as this thing moves off to the east and eventually goes back out to sea. And here's a wider view of that on the GFS. You can see Franklin and Adalia there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. You can see landfall. According to the GFS would be as late as 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And that's another thing to keep in mind. If we do see the storm slow down, there's a chance that it gets even stronger than currently predicted. The earlier this makes landfall, the better. The longer it has over the Gulf, the stronger it possibly becomes. So 11 a.m. is a little late, but you can see how all of that rain spreads out across Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina as we go through the day on Thursday. And eventually by Friday, everything really starts to fizzle out. In that short period of time, though, there are some areas that will see well over four inches of rain between Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. I'm really concerned about whoever gets in the axis of heaviest rainfall here. There will be significant flash flooding because of this. Okay, so of course, we're going to be covering this live on the Ryan Hall 
y'all channel. I think we're going to go live for a period of time tomorrow. We're going to have our y'all squad crew on the ground down there in Florida. We're going to try to get some interviews with local emergency managers and stuff like that. We'll also go over the forecast and take your questions and chat and all that good stuff. And then during landfall, we will be live probably for around 10 to 12 hours around it. So let's say landfall happens at 4 a.m. We'll probably start around, I don't know, midnight or 10 p.m. Tuesday and then go all the way through 8 a.m. Or, or something like that on Wednesday. So just make sure you're subscribed to the Ryan Hall Y'all channel, the main channel. Have notifications turned on so you don't miss any of this. We're going to have some potentially really important and life-saving information that we need to spread far and wide. And also, I know you're out there, a bunch of you just like hurricane watching, and we are going to have the, probably the best vantage point out of anybody with all of our storm chasers and camera networks and all that stuff. So help us make this a very informative event and also help us do what we do best. If this ends up being a catastrophic storm and we're at the top of YouTube, we have the ability to potentially raise hundreds of thousands of dollars through our nonprofit organization for these people, and that's the ultimate goal. All right, I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to start working on getting everything ready. You will hear from me multiple times between now and later landfall here on the main channel and on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. So make sure you follow me everywhere and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.